in 2014, we did a less than great job at putting a xenomorph into a shot, which to be fair to us, the whole point was that we used a cheap toy and a flashlight to do it. But as big fans of Alien, we've always wanted another crack at it. And what better time than the season of horror and monsters? Plus, Alien Romulus just came out recently, and we figured why not capitalize on the popularity of the franchise and exploit the film's growing attention so we can ride its coattails for reviews and ultimately money. I mean, because it's cool. <laughs> Our VFX artist Ryan Thompson built this shot, which was inspired by this one from Alien Romulus, all done entirely inside of After Effects. And to do that, the first thing we needed was a 3D model, this one, which we found on cgtrader.com. In After Effects, we're gonna make a 4K comp and create a new solid layer. On this, we'll add the Element 3D effect. Inside the scene setup, we're gonna import the Alien OBJ model we downloaded, check normalize size, and move the position up to align its feet with the ground. In the model dropdown, we can see multiple elements elements which we can keep visible or hide. For our shot, we have no need for the ground or for the static saliva since we'll be adding that ourselves. We'll import the albedo and normal textures doing this for each element. The model doesn't come with any glossiness or specular texture, so to break it up a bit, we'll use one from Video Copilot's Pro Shaders to add on pack, pasting it to the alien glossiness and changing some of the values. And then we did the same for the teeth to get that classic chrome look by using a metal material preset and again altering some of the values, not forgetting the whittle in old mouth teeth. So cute. For the environment, we chose a more interesting setting and made it darker. Now we can close that setup and back in After Effects, we'll increase the element world transform scale and change rotation to make the alien face us. Now we'll create a camera choosing a longer lens and framing up our shot. In the original shot, the alien does have some slow rotational movement. Now we can't rig or animate with a skeleton in element 3D, but we can use deformation the same way we did in our Godzilla episode a while back to add some small movements to the character. <laughs> So in the group one dropdown, go to particle look, deform, and in the twist and bend options, check enable and try changing different values to see how it deforms your model. Keyframe whichever ones you think work best and change them to animate throughout the timeline. And after that, we ended up with this. Now it's time for lighting. To follow a similar setup to the original, we'll add one strong white point light to the back left, finding a position we like for how it hits the side of its head to highlight the detail. Then using duplicates, we'll place various lights around the alien at different strengths, making some spotlights with feathered fall off and altering some of the color for variation. Then Thompson used an orange tint for this warm up light, keyframing to get brighter by the end of the timeline. To aim it towards the mouth, we used another with a narrow feathered spotlight focused at its mouth and keyframe to move during the animation. One thing we just didn't like was the bright border around the mouth, so we brought that texture into Photoshop and edited the mouth area to match its surroundings. Then inside the Element 3D scene, we swapped out the texture for the edit, giving us this. Now to match the flashing light, we can just keyframe the intensity on a couple of our After Effects lights to change throughout like this. We couldn't get a light like this on the dome, but really wanted to have some sort of highlight here. Fortunately, in Element 3D render settings, physical environment, we'll alter the exposure and gamma to boost the intensity of the reflection and can change the rotation until we get a similar highlight across the dome like this. While we're here, we'll enable ambient occlusion, changing some of the values as well as enable shadows, which will work for the spotlight as long as you have cast shadows switched to on for each light. You can also enable fog and choose a darker color to lessen the light fall on certain areas like the tail by using the depth sliders. This will also balance out the strength of the ambient occlusion as well. I really like this breakup of extra detail and highlight Light, so we found a workaround to add something similar here. First, duplicate the Element 3D solid and inside the new version scene, we'll change the main material from using the model's normal map to instead use the normal from the same Pro Shaders plaster material we used for the gloss, boosting both the UV repeat values to make the texture smaller and more detailed, giving us this bumpy surface. Then we're gonna lower the glossiness and boost reflectivity slightly and close element. Now in the render settings under the lighting dropdown, we'll uncheck Use Comp Lights, which also means we won't need shadows enabled. Then in the Physical Environment settings, we're gonna change Exposure, Gamma, and Lighting Influence to crush the reflection contrast, giving us some bumpy specular highlights. This layer can then be set to the Light and Blending mode to combine with the main alien layer. 
For the smoke and big volumetric lighting that we're gonna be adding, we also want some depth passes. So on a duplicate, in the output drop down, choose Z depth and move the slider to work with your camera distance and model scale. Like here, we have his face, which is close to camera as the dark aspect. With a couple more duplicates, we'll change the value to create different layers of depth. This third version will be used for adding slime inside the mouth. So we keyframe the depth value to change throughout the animation, keeping them at the correct distance. But with that done, we can hide these layers. For the background, because it's out of focus, we just need a nondescript environment. So we went to pexels.com and found this free warehouse stock photo from a similar low angle, which we'll drop in below the alien layer and change the scale, position, rotation to line up with how we want. For shallow depth of field, we can enable it in the 3D camera. It does help to boost the aperture first for easier visibility. Then we'll change the focus distance until we get it aligned around the alien's face. But with that aligned, we can then turn the aperture back down to a realistic amount. Then we can make the background plate a 3D layer to knock it out of focus too. But for this static shot, we'll opt for using a camera lens blur instead, which we think produces a better looking bokeh and gives us control over just the background. We'll also use a curves effect to darken the scene and another curves making the highlights orange, keyframing the effect opacity to increase by the end of the timeline matching the warm light on the alien. For some fake volumetric type atmosphere similar to the haze that we see here, especially during the bright light flashes, we can use a couple of solid layers, make the dimensions square and change the color to white. Double click the ellipse tool to add a circle and in the mask dropdown, really boost the feather and then lower the expansion to get a very soft roll off. Now use one of the Element 3D depth layers as a luma mat, meaning the darker the area of the alien's depth, the less visible this haze will be. And we're gonna place this off to the lower left where the flashing light will be. Changing the scale will also give a more focused or heavier haze look. For the neutral look, we're gonna lower the opacity quite a bit, but keyframe it to 100% during the frames that we have the 3D lights flashing, giving us this. Now with the duplicate, we're gonna change the mat to the second depth layer and move this over to the other side, changing the mask feather and expansion to make the roll off even smoother. Then we're gonna tint the solid color orange to match the uplight. Replace the opacity keyframes with just a gradual gain over time. And again, we can look to the reference to see how much haze from the warm light is filling the scene. To give some texture to the atmosphere, we're gonna add in some smoke, which is heavily utilized throughout the Alien franchise and really adds to the theatrical and industrial type of environment. So we'll use some smoke stock in a couple of different ways. One, we're gonna place beneath our Alien Element 3D layer, set the blending mode to screen, flip the scale to work with our framing and lower opacity. Then we'll place another smoke layer above everything, set to screen again, and this time use one of the depth layers as a luma mat so that the alien is moving through it. For this one, we're gonna use a few masks, one on the left side set to subtract. We're gonna feather and lower the opacity slightly to get some smoke still faintly visible in this area. And if you lower opacity on a subtracted mask as the first mask layer, it lowers the opacity of the overall layer instead. So just double click the rectangle tool to create a full frame mask and place that before the subtracting mask to then control opacity correctly. With another feathered mask on the right of the frame, we're gonna use a curves effect to color the smoke a warmer orange to match and use the new mask in the effects dropdown to isolate the color to just this area. For one last layer, we're gonna duplicate the camera and first depth pass and pre-comp with this steam asset. For the depth, we'll use a curves effect to make it brighter so that more of the steam will be visible in the front, then use this as a luma mat. Then we'll change position, scale, and rotation to have the steam fill the frame like this. In the main comp, instead of using the asset itself, we'll create an adjustment layer and use the steam comp as a luma mat. With this fast box blur effect, we'll increase the radius quite high and use a curves to boost the brightness. This can give a more natural look and the blur retains and spreads the color of anything below. You can also try changing the order of these for slightly different looks or keyframe opacity to brighten in time with the flashing. Now we're gonna add one of the most important elements, slime, just lots and lots of slime and drool. One, it's a xenomorph, you need it. But two, this sort of element really does help sell the life and realism of a shot like this. So for this, we're gonna be using a bunch of assets from our slime stock footage pack. You don't have to use ours, you can use whatever slime assets work best for you. But if you are interested, we have made our slime pack 30% off until the end of October to make it cheaper for all of you. And this pack is filled with all kinds of slime assets for VFX and motion graphics, so give that a look below. 
But with these slime assets, it helps to break it down into categories. We have slime on top of the dome, flowing slime, tearing slime, dripping slime, mouth slime, jiggly slime, and to top it all off, some dripping saliva. For some areas like the dome and around the mouth, we use the slime surface one and six assets masked in different places to get some flowing specular highlights. And with a rendered out version of our alien that we can take into Mocha Pro, we can use a mesh track to get the slime warping with changing perspective and depth. If you want a button by button on that, you can check out our tutorial on the mesh tracker in the notes below. For other slime elements, we use 2D tracks, have some set to screen, some set to overlay, and some used as displacement maps to jellify them just a little bit more. We also used the third depth pass we made to either block or isolate slime inside the mouth. There's really no rules, just try different things until you're happy with the result. For some final touches, we added this out of focus railing in the foreground, an adjustment layer with optical glow, some subtle camera shake animation, a color grade, and film convert to lay some grain over top. We also tried an alternate grade to get more of that 80s strong blue look, but there we have it, a slimy xenomorph in all its glory. <laughs> But this effect doesn't have to just apply to xenomorphs. This would work with any type of monster your project needs. All you need to do is swap out your environment and model. But that's it for today. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell button so you're notified when we put up new content. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.